This is my Honda Jazz that we're going to be putting a K20 engine in, but already there's a problem. Because the vacant space that you're now looking at is where our K20 engine should be, but due to holdups with the shipping company and the fact that the engine's got quite a distance to travel, it's not here yet. Fingers crossed it shows up a little later in this video. So on top of that K20, there's a lot of parts that you need in order to make it work with the Jazz platform. We need to think about things like the wiring, we need the gear cables to make it work, we need an exhaust that's going to work. Now thankfully, we've got all these parts here ready for when that engine arrives, but for now, we need to get the old original 1.4 out, so let's get to it. So we began by draining all the fluids, then basically just removing all the parts that we could get our hands on. As for removing the subframe, our grand plan here was to drop it down onto a tiny stool under the bolts and then lift the car off of it should stay down. Yeah, oh, that's got it. So in hindsight, one of the things that we should have probably done differently was disconnecting the ECU before we put the car on the ramp because you can see <laughs> the obvious problem that we're now gonna have. Good that, we've got a big rubber mount so we don't damage the door and the door hits the bolt. So we have reached the point where we're now removing all the mounts that hold the engine in place. I'm gonna get a pallet. The idea is we're gonna lower it down enough, take the final bolt out, and then try and raise the car off of it. Wish us luck here. Whilst Gary lifted the car off of the engine, it was my job to check for any snags. Before we knew it though, it was out. Now the work doesn't stop there, we need to put some cuts in these chassis legs. We need to do what's known as a notch. You might have seen this before, it's basically to make enough clearance so that that larger K20 engine can slot into the bay properly. So one of the things that most people do when they're doing these chassis cuts is they'll only add the cut to the left hand side. Now if you've watched Jack McNeil's Jazz Build, brilliant series if you haven't by the way, go check it out. One of the problems that he realised he had is the water pump pulley was hitting on the left hand side. So we thought we'd get ahead of the game and just cut it before we even put the engine in. Job done. One other cut that's required is in the front subframe. It makes you realise how much bigger the K20 is than the original engine, that we need to take a chunk out of this. Out came the grinder and welder once again. Spurred on by what felt like a series of wins, we then decided to remove both the selector box and gear cables. Selector box, easy, just unbolts from inside the car. Selector cables, you get them from underneath the car. Now we're not going to use any of this with our EP3 gearbox, so we'll set them aside for now. But look who decided to join the party. Now I've had a few people ask, why did I choose this engine for the project? Let me tell you why. Fun, there's your one word answer. Beyond being just fun, these are undoubtedly one of the very best four-cylinder engines ever made. A near 9,000 RPM redline, 230, 240 brake horsepower possible with just bolt-ons and a map, and bulletproof reliability. The K20 is an absolute legend and we're lucky to be able to experience it, as with ever tightening emission regulations, it's unlikely that we'll ever see another naturally aspirated wonder like it again. Our lightweight jazz should be an absolute rocket with this fitted, and I also know I'm not the first to do this engine swap. 
but that's okay. I'm just a petal head that loves Hondas and I wanted my very own K20 Jazz. I'm just glad my engine arrived. And just in the nick of time as well, because we've just finished all the jobs that we've got on the car itself. So now it's onto the engine. Now, favourite to ask you, if you're enjoying this video, please do hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, and please do leave your thoughts in the comments below because I love to read them. Right, let's get on with this clutch. Would lie to you, didn't matter what I do. She's got a hold on me. Job number one, once the gearbox was removed, was just giving everything a real good clean up. We could then get on with aligning our new clutch and bolting it down with the new pressure plate. So there we go, we now have our new clutch installed. Brand new pressure plate, new clutch in there, and we even have a new little throw out bearing to go in as well. Once that was in place, we could ensure a nice smooth action and get everything bolted back together. She's a little bit crazy. So next up we need to tackle this old nasty looking rocker cover. I've got a nice new one there to go on and honestly I'm so proud of how far we've come already with this whole project. I've never attempted anything this big in my life. It's all a bit of a risk, there's a lot of parts to buy including the car. Now one way that I minimised the risk when I was buying the car was by using vehiclescore.co.uk. What this service does is allow you to put the plate of any car in and find out all the good and bad points for completely free. Now if you are serious about buying a car like I was this one, then buy one of their paid HPI reports because it will give you a full background on it. Right, let's get this rocker on now. Now it's not just about that nice new shiny rocker cover, we had to buy new gaskets as well because once this engine's in, we really don't want anything leaking. She's a little bit crazy. Now seemed a good point to take off the old exhaust manifold as well because we're not going to be using this original one, we'll be replacing it with a 421 manifold. And on top of that, we also gave the inlet manifold a little bit of a clean up with some high temp paint. From there, all that was left to do was slot this new rocker cover onto our engine, get it bolted down and its new look was complete. And just like that, our K20 is ready to slot into our little jazz engine bay. Can you believe how well this thing came up with a little bit of a makeover? Now, honestly, I am so eager to get this in the car and running. We're just going to crack on and get it done. But for you, that's going to make up part of episode two when this is going to be fitted and we're going to be attempting a first start. Now, if you don't want to miss that, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell notification. Thank you so much for watching so far. I'll see you for the next part. Ready to crank?